Today, I'm gonna to show you how to master audio using iMovie for OS X. I'm gonna take you through the process of synchronizing a video and audio file first, then we'll go into the mastering tools and we'll go to export the file out ready for upload to your favorite social media platform. Now, my workflow involves using a Canon EOS R camera and in addition to that, most often I'll use some kind of external microphone that's being recorded into a Zoom audio recorder. So I've got two audio files that I need to synchronize on the timeline. When I'm using Final Cut Pro, Premiere or DaVinci Resolve, there's an auto sync feature which makes this process really easy and streamlined and you can't go wrong. Unfortunately, iMovie doesn't have that feature, but you can do it manually and I'm gonna show you how to do it. And then when you sync the files, you wanna be able to master it using some basic EQ, which you have available to you in iMovie and I'll show you how to do that in this video as well. Now, before I get into my edit, I always make sure that I'm wearing some kind of monitoring headphones, whether it's over-ear or in-ear headphones. My preference is over-ear because it really helps isolate all of the background noise in the room and it lets me really focus in on the audio to listen to the audio as it was recorded and it helps in the mastering process. So any set of headphones will do, but if you have over ears, uh, it's certainly gonna help you out significantly. Having said that, let's get started by opening up iMovie and we'll import our media into the media window. You can do that by going into file import or just dragging the media into the media window on the left hand side. Drag your video clip onto the timeline and then drag your separate audio track just below it on the timeline as well. The next step is to lift the audio level of the video track by dragging the horizontal bar in the blue section, which represents your audio. Drag it up to the top till it's 100%. And at that point, you should be able to see the audio waveform of your video file. And you can then go ahead and drag the audio track left or right in order to match up the waveforms. Now to make this process even more streamlined, you can actually add a marker on the video file and audio file. So to do that, tap on the video file first, bring the playhead over to the beginning of the waveform and tap on the M key on the keyboard, tap on the audio file, bring your playhead over to the point at which the audio waveform commences, tap on the M key on the keyboard, and then you have two markers that are attached to each of those files. Now you can drag the audio file left or right until those two markers meet. And when they meet, you'll notice that iMovie creates a yellow line to indicate that the markers are intersecting. And if you let go, that will hold the files in place and lock in the synchronized audio files. You can play back the audio to make sure they're in sync. If you hear any degree of echo, you might be a few millimeters out. So you can nudge either the video clip or the audio file left or right by a few millimeters, play back again until you hear the audio files are completely in sync. Once you've done that, you can bring down the audio levels of the video file to zero by dragging the horizontal bar in the blue section of the video clip down to zero, play back again and you should hear the audio of your microphone playing along with your video clip completely in sync. Once you've done that, you can then adjust the level of that audio file by dragging the horizontal bar of the audio file up or down. If you drag it too high, you'll notice some red appear in the top section of the waveform, which tends to indicate that your audio is gonna be clipping. So bring it down to the point where there is no clipping in the file. You can also adjust the volume level automatically by clicking on the speaker icon that appears just above the preview footage window. Click on auto and iMovie will automatically level that audio for you. Or you can use the percentage bar slider to the right to increase or decrease the volume of your track until it sounds right to your ear. Once you've done that, click on the next icon along to EQ your audio. If you have some noise in your audio, which often you do, this could be line noise from the microphone itself or even room noise such as air conditioning or outside traffic, you can click on the noise reduction option to significantly reduce the amount of noise in the recording. 
If you go higher than 30 or 40% on the noise reduction slider, you're gonna find the audio will sound a little bit unnatural or artificial. So ideally, you wanna make sure that at the time of recording, you've done the best you can to minimize the amount of outside noise coming into the recording. You've turned the aircon off, you've closed the windows, and that you're speaking as close to the microphone as possible to avoid having reflections and echo from the room coming into the microphone. So if you've done all that and you've got the slider up at around 30%, you should find that you have a crystal clear audio signal. Once you've done that, the next thing to do is to go through your EQ presets to find one that best suits your voice. I'll play back through a few of the options now so you can get a sense of what they sound like, but ultimately it's gonna be up to you to choose the preset that suits your audio preferences and also matches the tone of your own voice. Move the slider up to see the audio waveform. Over the audio file and move the slider up to see the audio waveform. Then I would hover over the audio file and move the slider up to see the audio waveform. I would hover over the audio file and move the slider up to see the audio waveform. Then I would hover over the audio file and move the slider up to see the audio and move the slider up to see the audio waveform. I would hover over the audio file and move the slider up to see the audio waveform. The play button and check the audio level, make sure that it sits at around negative three. Then I would hover over the audio file and move the slider up to see the audio waveform. Once you've done all that, you've completed the audio mastering using iMovie and you're now ready to export your file out, ready for upload to social media. So click on the projects icon on the top left hand corner to go back to the projects tab. A pop-up option will appear asking you to name your project. Give it a name and then you'll be in the projects section. Click on the three dotted icon next to the title of your project. Click on share and here you can choose to export your video out directly to email, to social media, including Facebook or YouTube, or as a video file that you can upload later to the social media network of your choice. Thanks for watching, hopefully you found this information helpful. If you wanna see a full tutorial on how to edit video using iMovie, I'll leave a link to it in the description box below. If you have any questions about what you've seen today, feel free to drop them in the comments box below. Thanks for watching, see you on the next one, bye for now.